Good evening, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this special right here on the Riley King Network. Commitment 2020 Primary Countdown. As you know, tomorrow is a big day in New Hampshire. Everyone in New Hampshire will go to the polls and vote. Primary voting is tomorrow in New Hampshire. We are going to help you get caught up. If you're still undecided, not sure who to vote for, this is for you to watch. So, we're going to begin. Get you caught up if you haven't been paying attention to any politics or any of the candidates. You should watch this right now. So, let's begin. We have... Lots of candidates in New Hampshire tonight getting their last-minute pitches out before the voters head to the polls. For example, one candidate that is in New Hampshire is President Donald Trump. He's doing a re-election rally at SNHU Arena in Manchester, New Hampshire. Mike Pence was in New Hampshire today. He had an event in Portsmouth, then went to Manchester and was on the stage before Trump went on stage. Let's listen to some of Trump's rally right now. If you want to shut down sanctuary cities, if you want to protect your family and your loved ones, you must vote Republican in 2020. illegal border crossings eight straight months in a row. Illegal crossings are down now at record numbers and we've ended catch and release. You know what catch and release is? You catch an illegal alien by law. You then take his name and address. They don't have addresses. What's your address? What? They don't have addresses. They come into the country. They don't have addresses. So you take his name. And then you have to release him into the country. And you say, we'll see you in four years for your court case. We never see him. They never come back. We have seized record amounts of drugs. We have deported record numbers of gang members, MS-13 by the thousand. And we have done more to secure the border of our country than any administration in history. Remember this. Washington Democrats have never been more extreme. Taking their cues from Crazy Bernie, 132 congressional Democrats have signed up for Bernie's health care takeover that would strip 180 million Americans of their very, very coveted private coverage. The Democrat Party wants to run your health care, but they can't even run a caucus in Iowa. Okay, that is some live video footage from the Trump rally this evening at SNHU Arena in Manchester, New Hampshire. Now let's take a look at the other candidates that are in New Hampshire this evening. Sanders thanks supporters on eve of New Hampshire primary. Democratic presidential candidate criticizes campaign for taking donations from billionaires. Bernie Sanders is holding a rally this evening at UNH in Durham. Pete Buttigieg, he's also having an event tonight. Buttigieg says he can build broad base of support. Democrat presidential candidate holds a rally on eve of primary. Former Mayor Pete Buttigieg had three rallies scheduled across New Hampshire on the eve of the primary. And his last 
evening event, Buttigieg capping his campaign with a rally Monday night in Exeter, New Hampshire. Elizabeth Warren. Warren hopes for strong showing in primaries. Candidate focuses message on ending corruption in Washington. As some polls show, Democrat presidential candidate Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg leading the field in New Hampshire, Elizabeth Warren said she's hoping for a strong showing when voters head to the polls tomorrow. Warren revived up a crowd of more than 200 supporters in Rochester by talking about ending corruption and restructuring government away from protecting the wealth in connected. Polls have shown a large number of undecided voters in New Hampshire and the Warren campaign is hoping for a surprise tomorrow. Large crowd greets Colin Bulcher on eve of primary. Colin Bulcher says she has momentum before voters head to the polls. A large crowd packed Democrat presidential candidate Amy Colin Bulcher's town hall event Monday in Exeter, focusing many, forcing many to wait outside in the cold. Columbus Belcher has seen an uptick in recent polls since Friday night's debate. She said she's hoping to build on that momentum and bring supporters to the polls on Tuesday. Columbus Belcher told the crowd of hundreds that her campaign raised three million since the debate. Columbus Belcher had a Get Out the Vote event planned Monday night in Rochester, New Hampshire. GOP Republican Weld meets with voters at Diner in Manchester. Former governor says he can reach out to Republicans who don't like Trump. Former Massachusetts Governor Bill Weld visited a popular breakfast place in Manchester on Monday on the eve of New Hampshire primary. He went to the Red Arrow Diner. Weld had a satellite interview at the Red Arrow Diner before he met with voters. Gabbard Yang reach out to voters before primary. Yang says his divided plan would help all Americans. Democrat candidates Chelsea Gabbard and Andrew Yang campaigned Monday in New Hampshire on the day before voters head to the polls. Gabbard scheduled a 6 p.m. town hall event at the Rec Theater in Manchester while Yang had six campaign stops planned. Yang spoke to supporters in Portsmouth. Bennett pitches progressive real deal before New Hampshire voters head to the polls. Democratic presidential candidate talks to college students. Democratic presidential candidate Michael Bennett wrapped up his real deal road trip Monday telling New Hampshire voters that he can beat President Donald Trump. Bennett spoke to students at St. Elson College about what he describes as his progressive real deal. The plan tackles issues with Medicare, ed education, and middle class. Bennett planned to head to Dartmouth College on Monday night to speak with New Hampshire College Democrats first in the nation primary eve meeting. 
Patrick reaches out to undecided voters in New Hampshire. Democratic presidential candidate says his campaign's energy is high. Democratic presidential hopeful Deval Patrick said he's not keeping an eye on the polls as he made three campaign stops on Monday in New Hampshire. He met with voters and was interviewed on a satellite radio at the Red Arrow Diner in Manchester. The former Massachusetts governor said his goal is to meet potential voters and let them know where he stands. Patrick also had stops in Concord and the Bookery in Manchester. Twenty twenty primary voter guide major candidates issues where to vote. New Hampshire, it's now your turn. See below for key voter information, including information for candidates' upcoming live coverage and important voter information ahead of the first in the nation primary on Tuesday, February 11th, tomorrow. How and where to vote. Get information about your polling location, how to register to vote, and important phone number if any problems occur. And we will share that link with you on the Riley King Network Facebook page. Tomorrow we will have live coverage of results coming into our newsroom of all the primary results when they come in tomorrow night. So be sure to join us tomorrow night for that coverage. It begins at 7.30 p.m. tomorrow. Meet candidates. Learn about major candidates for president below. Let's meet those candidates. If you haven't been watching the presidential primary race, then you do not know. So let's introduce those candidates if you haven't been paying attention. First candidate we're talking about is Senator Michael Bennett. U.S. Senator Michael Bennett, 54, is serving a second term representing Colorado. He serves on Senate Finance, Agriculture, and Health Education, Labor, and Pensions Committees. The Candidate Issue And if you want to learn about all these issues, you can click any of these issues here. We will share a link with you after this broadcast. Next candidate, former Vice President Joe Biden. Former Vice President Joe Biden, 77, served two terms as Vice President under President Barack Obama. He represented Delaware in the U.S. Senate from 1973 to 2009. It unsuccessfully ran for President in 1988 and 2008 Democrat primary campaigns. Former South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg. Pete Buttigieg, 38, is the former mayor of South Bend, Indiana and the former Indiana State Treasurer. He is an Afghan war veteran and Rhodes Scholar who was first elected mayor in 2011 at age 29. Rep. Telsey Gabbard. U.S. Rep. Telsey Gabbard, 38, of Hawaii, has served in the U.S. Senate since 2013. Gabbard is a member of the House Foreign Affairs and Armed Service Committee. Senator Amy Cullen-Bulger, U.S. Senator Amy Cullen-Bulger, 59, of Minnesota, is serving her third term. She serves on the Senate Judiciary Rules, Agriculture, and Commerce Committees. For Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick, 
former Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick became a late entrance to the race on November 14th. Patrick, 63, was first elected as governor in 2006 and was re-elected in 2010. Senator Bernie Sanders. U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders, 78, of Vermont, won the New Hampshire Democratic presidential primary in 2016. He's running on a platform of making the lives working for people better. Businessman Tom Steyer, billionaire Tom Steyer, 62, says he's running for president to change what he calls a broken political system. He was an early supporter of the impeaching President Donald Trump. Senator Elizabeth Warren, U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren, 70 of Massachusetts, has focused on improving conditions for working people as the centerpiece of her campaign. Entrepreneur Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang, 45, is an entrepreneur who announced his candidacy for president in spring of 2018. Yang believes the federal government should provide everyone with universal background income, basic income. President Donald Trump. President Donald Trump, 73, is running for his second term. He won in the 2016 Republican primary in New Hampshire with a 35% of the vote. He nearly lost New Hampshire in 2016 general election to Hillary Clinton. Former Massachusetts Governor Bill Weld. Former Massachusetts Governor Bill Weld, 74, is running for president as a Republican, taking on President Trump for his party's nomination. In 2016, Weld was the vice presidential nominee of the Libertarian Party, running for president the nominee Gary Johnson. And those are the candidates that are running this time around. Now, let's take a look at the candidates on issues. Let's take a look at that big list. And here is a look at those issues. You got guns, health care, tax, climate change, Iran, Michael Bennett, Joe Biden, Pete Buttigieg, Tulsi Gabbard, and Amy Cullen-Bulger, and Deval Patrick. Here are the issues they are saying. And now, here are Bernie Sanders, Tom Steyer, Elizabeth Warren, Andrew Yang. Their issues. And here's the Republicans, Donald Trump and Bill Weld. The candidates on the issues in those categories. Fundraising in New Hampshire. Buttigieg raised most among Democrats in 19, but Trump topped all with 1.1 million from New Hampshire donors. Now, let's take a look at um, the sample ballot for you. This is the first ballot we're taking a look at is the Democratic ballot. And um, let's take a look at 
all the candidates on the Democratic ballot. So the first name on the list is Andrew Yang. Then you have Michael Bennett, Joe Biden, Cory Booker. Cory Booker dropped out of the race. Then you have a lesser name candidate from Arkansas, Mosey Boyd, Steve Bullock. He dropped out of the race. You got Steve Burke, a lesser known candidate. Pete Buttigieg. Julian Castro dropped out of the race. Racordi Lafont, a lesser known candidate. John Delaney dropped out of the race. Jason Everett Duplass, a lesser known candidate. Michael E. Ellinger, a lesser known candidate. Tulsi Gabbard, Ben Gel Gelberman, lesser known candidate, Mark Stewart Ginston, a lesser known candidate, Kamala Harris, dropped out of the race, Henry Hughes, a lesser known candidate, Amy Cullen Bulcher, Tom Coos, a lesser known candidate, Lawrence Carroz, Lesser known candidate, Rita, a lesser known candidate, Raymond Marzone, lesser known candidate, Deval Patrick, Bernie Sanders, Josie Steck dropped out of the race, Sam Salone, a lesser known candidate, Tom Steyer, David Thistio, Thomas James Torgins, lesser known candidate, and David Tissio is also a lesser known candidate. Elizabeth Warren. Robbie Wells, a lesser known candidate. And Marion Williamson dropped out of the, way, the race. And there's a spot for write in if you want to write a candidate in yourself. Now, let's take a look at the Republican sample ballot. Here are the Republicans that are running. There are some lesser known candidates and the candidates that we hear about almost every day. So the first candidate, William N. Murphy is a lesser known candidate. June Pine is a lesser known candidate. Donald J. Trump. Jill Walsh dropped out of the way. Bill Weld. Robert R. D. Nine, a lesser known candidate. President R. Bobby, lesser known candidate. Stephen B. Cromley Sr., a lesser known candidate. Ra Rocky D. Lafont, a lesser known candidate. Bobby Eli, a lesser known candidate. Zeth Lente, lesser known candidate. Larry Horn, lesser known candidate. Rick Kraft, lesser known candidate. Star Locke, lesser known candidate. Matthew, a lesser known candidate. Mary Maxwell, lesser known candidate. And Eric Murrow, lesser known candidate. And there's a spot for writing if you want to write a candidate. And that is a look at your um, Republican ballot, sample ballot, and the Democratic sample ballot. Voter information. How to register. Polling places. Voter ID. And report problems. Here is some important information about voting in New Hampshire. Not sure where to vote? Go to the Secretary of State's website to search by name or address. Are you registered? Check your party registration. Problems at the poll. Contact 
the moderator at the polling location. If your problem is not addressed, the New Hampshire Attorney General has set up a voter hotline to report problems or ask questions. Voters may call 1-866-868-3703 or 1-866-VOTER-03 on Election Day. Information on registering and voting. There have been changes in recent years to how Granite Staters can register to vote. For updated information, check out this FAQ jointly issued by the Secretary of State and Attorney General's Office. To be eligible to register and vote in New Hampshire, a person must be at least 18 years old, a U.S. citizen, and be in the town or ward where the person plans to vote. If you're registering at the polls, you must bring documents to prove identity, age, citizenship, and where you live. A driver's license or non-driver's license from any state establishment, identity, and age. And here is all that information. To vote, you'll be asked for a valid photo ID. If you do not have an approved photo ID, you'll still be able to vote, but you'll have to sign a challenge voter affidavit. You'll also have your photo taken if you object to a having your photo taken because of religious beliefs, you can fill out an affidavit of religious exemption. And there you go on all the information in time for voting day tomorrow. First vote, first five votes will be cast in Dixville Notch. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR. News 9 will have a crew live in Dixville Notch tonight at midnight as the first five votes are cast in the New Hampshire primary. Dixville Notch started midnight voting in 1960, but the tradition was put in jeopardy this year when not enough people in the community were registered to vote. But last month, the man behind the Balsam's redevelopment registered to vote, giving the community the minimum of five registered voters in order for the midnight vote to take place. Midnight voting also takes place in Hart's location and Millsfield tonight, but we'll be live there. Ray the Roy. tradition yeah. will continue, and Ray will be there, which is also a tradition. Okay, and there you go. Right at midnight tonight. Candidate Phil Halls of WMUR for live show days before primary yesterday on Close Up. Let's take a look at that video and that report from WMUR News 9, Adam Sexton. On this final Sunday before the first in the nation vote, nine presidential candidates stopped by WMUR in the 10 a.m. hour for a live edition of Close Up. So many that they were running into each other in the hallways and sharing a few laughs. Get out of here. Pete Buttigieg says he's eager to see how his campaign ground game will perform on Tuesday. We had our first test of it in Iowa. Now New Hampshire is a huge test of it. It's a tall order for Buttigieg or anyone else to challenge Bernie Sanders, who won here in 2016, but is taking nothing for granted. Whatever happened in 2016 is not relevant to 2020. Amy Klobuchar is riding high after a strong debate performance she knows the Granite State was watching. 
New Hampshire focuses on um, all the details about the candidates. There are neighboring state candidates aplenty vying for votes down the home stretch, including two former Massachusetts governors. On the Republican side, Bill Weld. For the Democrats, Deval Patrick. I think New Hampshire has been great. It's uh, crunch time for the New Hampshire primary. I think it's fair to say it's also crunch time for the country. Elizabeth Warren is trying to go wire to wire, running on big structural change in Washington. We got a chance to turn that around in 2020. Michael Bennett and Tulsi Gabbard have both focused heavily on the Granite State. We're making the case, continuing to reach out to all New Hampshire voters. I think we're going to surprise some people on Tuesday and... It's been such a privilege for me and my family to spend the time that we've spent in New Hampshire. We've loved it. Tom Steyer is betting big on mail and TV ads here in New Hampshire, but he says he's not looking past the first in the nation primary. Look, New Hampshire is the first primary in the country. Of course it's important to our campaign. Now, Tom Steyer tells us he's focused on New Hampshire, but he's taking a bit of a different approach than the rest of the field right now. He left the state today to campaign in South Carolina. In the studio, Adam Sexton, WMUR, News 9. Okay, there you go on that video and that report. Candidates make pitch for undecided voters. Let's take a look at that video. If you are an undecided voter, you should make a decision before tomorrow. So watch this video right now. Making a pitch to undecided Granite State voters, Democratic candidates stopped by the WMUR studios this morning. What are realistic expectations for you on the primary? I think I'd like to finish in the top three or four. I think that would be great for me. Any kind of unexpected finish would be good. I've loved being here. I've been here more than any other candidate. Yesterday, I finished my 50th town hall. I'm the only one in the race who uh, has delivered um, on sentencing reform, who's uh, delivered on terrific schools for our kids, including closing uh, achie achievement gaps. I'm the only one in the, in the, uh, in the race who's actually grown jobs, 25% 25, uh, 25 year uh, employment high coming out of uh, recessions. We have got to focus as primary voters and as a party in choosing a candidate who first and foremost can beat Donald Trump and can take them down on the economy, which I can do because I have a 30-year history in the private sector of figuring out what creates growth. In Claremont, Andrew Yang explained why the current tax laws have had an adverse effect on local businesses. How much did Amazon pay in taxes last year? Zero. That is the math, Claremont. $20 billion out, 30% of stores close. Back in our studios, Representative Tulsi Gabbard expressed her displeasure with the DNC following the caucus debacle in Iowa. Ultimately, this is a failure of leadership, and I think the DNC chair, Tom Perez, should resign. It's, it's both because of what we've seen happen in Iowa, but also over the last several months, the growing skepticism that I hear from Democrat voters. Mike Cherry, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that is it for this special of your 2020 Commitment Primary Countdown. I hope you all enjoyed watching this special, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. I'll see you back here tomorrow for all your primary coverage tomorrow. And be sure to join us tomorrow night for primary coverage results coming into our newsroom. We'll begin that coverage at 7.30 p.m. tomorrow. Have a wonderful night, everyone. See you back here tomorrow with more news coverage. Good night. Bye.